Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you had a lovely day. And as I promised in my previous video, today I will share a personal experience that I have no other explanation than call it I lived in a haunted flat for six years. I know <laughs> this sounds crazy, but hear me out and share with me down in the comments what do you think about the things I'm going to talk about if you ever had any similar experience. And I'd also appreciate if you like the video and give me a thumbs up. Now let's get to the story. Everything started in 2006 when, due to personal reasons, uh, we had to move from our previous place and my dad found uh, this really spacious and uh, big four-bedroom flat and I remember my parents had discussion between them that apparently the price was very attractive for, the pro for a property of that size. Anyway, so uh, we got the place and I remember when we started moving in on the, on the front door there was a obituary of an old man when we walked in there was i remember there was two walking sticks just leaning on the wall and uh, i remember that was a little bit creepy but my mom just quickly got everything and just uh, throw it away so the whole day my mom and dad uh, they would spend cleaning and tidying up and arranging our own furniture the next day my mom looked a little bit stressed and so we, when we asked her what going, what's going on, she said that uh, she had a horrible nightmare and couldn't sleep very well that night. Of course, we asked her what uh, nightmare she had uh, and she said that uh, all night she dreamt about an old man with a very long coat and a hat. Now she wouldn't be able to see his face but she would be able to see his frame and he would tell her you need to leave, this is uh, my home all of you are not welcome here to which my mom would reply no this is our place uh, you need to leave and back and forth so we didn't uh, we didn't talk really much of that uh, situation uh, we just thought it was a dream and few months will pass by without anything unusual happening in the place so after a few months it was just natural for us to start getting to know our neighbors and we got very close with the lady who lived uh, below us. Um, I won't share her name just because, you know, I didn't ask for permission. I don't know if she wants her name to be said on a video. But I would just say that uh, my mom would tell her uh, one day about this nightmare. And she would say to my mom that this man remarkably resembled the previous owner of our own flat. Uh, his name was Mylan. It was usual for him to wear like a black coat and a hat. I, and I remember also she would share with my mom that uh, he wasn't a good person at all. Even could consider him evil as uh, he would be very argumentative and he would always look to complain about anything and everything. And this was something very weird. Even on few occasions he would throw jars at the kids that were playing outside on the playground because we had a, a kids playground outside the building uh, with the intent to hurt them. My mom thought that uh, probably the whole ordeal with uh, her nightmare was just a coincidence and maybe it was just uh, from the stress of moving places. Now something we discovered later uh, was that the flat was on this, on this low price as it was put for sale for over four years and no one bought it. Why you ask? <laughs> well, let me tell you, apparently this man Mylan, I'm sorry I would say that, but he took his own life inside the flat. I don't know what he's been going through, uh, but no one deserves, you know, to die that way. So, yeah, we didn't know about that uh, and we were not informed that this incident happened in the house. Now, uh, my mom, she doesn't believe in anything supernatural and to this day she would say that uh, me and my dad and all the countless friends that uh, were coming to our place, we're all crazy and we all have wild imagination. Now, uh, a couple of things happen later on and those are very weird i don't know how to address them but i remember that you know my mom and dad they, they from the money left 
from the previous property. They bought me a computer and I was very excited, so I had my own room. Even I remember the game I was playing, I was playing Need for Speed Carbon on my computer and uh, all of a sudden I start hearing some voices coming out of the kitchen. Uh, my room was just next to the kitchen. I remember that I heard two women and they were chatting. I couldn't he hear clearly what they were talking about, but it was clear to me that the, the voices were coming from the kitchen. Yeah, so I, I just quickly ran to the kitchen to, to check what is going on and there was no one and no voices, nothing. It was silent. Then I went back to my room and this occurred again. I could hear these two women talking about some sort of machines. There was some machinery involved. I, I could not make up what they were talking about. Uh, but I quickly uh, shout to my mom and dad to come to my room and hear for themselves that this was weird. Yeah. So my mom and dad, they came in. My dad could hear them. Of course, my mom didn't even bother to come to the room. So my dad was like, oh my God, yeah. I could hear them as well and then we both went to the kitchen and nothing it was very weird now you would say and even my mom would say that it was the neighbors but hear me out the flat was on the last floor and it was because of the size of the place that we didn't have any neighbors on either side of ours the only person that was living below below us this friend of my mom to this day we could never ever hear anything coming out of her voice the wall of the flat were very thick uh, it was pretty sound isolated um, if you can call it this way and no I, we would never hear anything and for the first time i could hear clearly that there was something going on in the kitchen anyway uh we i i, I carry on hearing them couple of times after this incident and we all got spooked out in the end without my mom my mom didn't believe even to this day she doesn't believe in anything but we decided uh to call a priest and just bless the place yeah now this is the creepiest thing ever and oh my god so we called this priest uh, and we arranged a price of 250 euro for him to bless the place so he come to the place and he just walked in one step and he just hang the money back and he said I cannot even enter this place there's a very dark energy and there's a very upset spirit something along these lines that there was a very upset spirit and he can't even enter the premises because the energy is too dark but he didn't say he's afraid but imagine my reaction to a priest leaving the place returning the money and refusing to bless the place i mean wow <laughs> honestly at that point i didn't know what to do and i know it's very easy to say oh why you stay there just leave no i mean we used the last money of ours to buy this property and there was no way i mean the, the place were was on sale for four years. For four years, no one bought it. Probably if we did put it for sale, after, because we did little renovation, but probably if we did put it for sale, at that point, we wouldn't be able to sell it. Not at least as quick as we wish to. And to everything, uh, my mom would, would say that we're crazy, and she was feeling very comfortable in the place, so she was highly against selling the place, yeah? So, a couple of months pa passed by, I still could hear those two women talking about but one of the creepiest, most creepiest instance that I ever endured in that flat was one night I was sleeping and I could hear steps towards me. It was I was in my room and I feel I could hear step, step, step and they were like coming closer and closer and closer and in the end oh, Honestly, I, I know I sound crazy, but I swear to God, this happened to me. There was um, kind of, it's, it's like what someone was breathing in my neck. I was like, <sighs> in my neck. I was paralyzed. I swear, I was paralyzed. It was the creepiest thing I ever, ever experienced in my life. I wanted to scream so badly and I was like forcing myself like I was like <laughs> but <laughs> there was no voice coming out of my my mouth I, I I just was completely numb I was completely frozen there and 
in the end, I don't know, I just shaked myself, I jumped and I just switched on the light, there was no one of course, and I started screaming from the tip of my lungs and both my mom and dad, they came in, my mom was very agitated, she said that again I'm hallucinating or this was a dream or whatever, but I have a side note to say, years later I would discover that there is something called sleep paralysis. Many people describe it as seeing shadow people, shadow persons and not being able to move, being aware of what's going on and not being able to move. It is very highly likely that I experienced sleeping paralysis and maybe, but it was so vivid. Honestly, I don't know, but this was the creepiest thing I have ever endured in my entire life. Now, um, I started feeling very uneasy in the house. I decided I would move out. Even though I was just 15, 16 years old, I just couldn't, I just couldn't face, carry on living there. And I was thinking how I can move out, how I can escape. I start thinking maybe I can uh, move to my auntie. I just need to go somewhere. I, I couldn't stay there any longer. But I couldn't. I couldn't move out. I had no money. I was still studying. I had no work. So I, I couldn't escape. I was trapped. I felt trapped there. And um, my father, he was completely supporting me. He was fully on my side and he believed in what was going on there. Uh, now around that time we had a friend, uh, he came to visit us and he stayed over. So we placed him in my room and I went to sleep uh, in the living living room, there was a sofa, so I went to sleep there and he slept, slept in my room. Around 2-ish o'clock in the morning he really wanted to go to the toilet. This is what he would say in the morning. I really needed to go to the toilet and I saw a female going in the, because my so the position of my room was like my room you're coming out of the room and directly in front of the room is the toilet so he could see um that a woman is going inside the toilet and he thought it was my mom so 15 minutes passed by 20 minutes passed by and she's not coming out in the end he is he is going to the toilet he's knocking on the door and he's been like mimi come on because my mom is called maria and um for sure they were calling her Mimi. And he was like, Mimi, come on, I need to go to the toilet. But no, no answer from inside. So he would he would try to open the door. And when he opened the door, there was no one in there now. Uh, and also he would say that um, the light was on uh, inside the toilet. Now in the morning, he would tell us, oh, he, he would actually attack my mom. And he would be like, Maria, what you, you what you've been doing in the toilet for so long? And then he was like, Oh, but hold on, you went to the toilet, but you didn't come out of the toilet. And then I went to check and there was no one in there. And my mom would say, I haven't been to the toilet last night. He was really freaked out. He was really freaked out. He was like, I'm not coming here anymore. Because actually, <laughs> the night before, uh, me and my dad, we were like all bombarding him about stories about the place. Uh, the things that have, that have been happening. So it is very possible that, you know, maybe he got spooked and... This was imagination of his, but he said that the light were on in the toilet and he clearly saw a, a woman going into the toilet. Now, again, a couple of months will pass by, not much will happening, uh, will be happening in the place. And then me and my mom, once, we would go to visit a friend of ours and we would leave my grandma home. And my grandma was like very often she was staying home because I'm going to school, my dad is working, my mom is working, so it was completely usual for her. She was just sitting there watching telly. So my mom and I, we went to a friend of hers, uh, it was a colleague of hers, and she would be living close by, so it wasn't even, what, 20 minutes walking distance from ours. So we went there, we had a lovely lunch, and we chat for a bit and then we were coming back home to witness my grandma on the floor in agony she was crying so badly we quickly called ambulance and I remember they determined that my grandma had a broken hip she would fall on the floor straight on the floor and she would break her hip when my grandma came out of the hospital we asked her what happened because she was in such a pain that when we found her that she couldn't say anything. She had surgery, of course. Uh, they replaced her hip with um, implant. And um, she, when she came home, uh, we asked her what happened. So she said that 
uh, and she swore. And my, my grandma wasn't crazy, yeah? My grandma was completely sane, full in her mind. And she said that she was sitting and watching her shows, then someone will ring the bell. But because she uh, thought no one would look for me if they look for Maria and Julian, she thought I won't answer the door because if they look for you, they would call you, yeah? And then a male, she could hear a male voice telling her in her ear, go and open the door. And she would refuse to go and open the door, but in the end she would, like this voice in her head was insisting that she has to go and open the door. Now my grandma, as soon as she like stand up on her feet and walk, you know, because uh, it was a corridor. So as soon as she was walking towards the corridor to open the door, what she said that someone pushed her from behind and she just directly fall down on the, on the floor. And my grandma, she, she wouldn't lie for that. She, she was pretty confident that this is what happened to her. She was really scared. And she started also saying, we need to leave, we need to leave, we need to leave. So finally, we decided to put the flat for sale. And uh, we called an agency, we arranged everything. Interest was somewhat there. There were some people coming for, you know, seeing the place and then, you know, uh, we were hoping for a very quick sale. But in the meantime, while we were selling, something <laughs> something happened that was the top of the cherry. I, I'll, I'll call it the top of the cherry. There was There is a day in Bulgaria uh, that it's called Zadushnica, and this day we celebrate the death. So we go to the graveyard, we lit a candle for the deceased, and you know, in the name of the deceased uh, people and usually for loved ones. And on that day, it was the very first um, I remember it was the very first Zatushnitz for the year because I think there's two or three and I remember that we had a, a electricity cut off for some reason uh, it was late at night, I had a dog now the dog went berserk uh, Kiara went berserk uh, she started growling, she started uh, barking at something but there was nothing there and then all of a sudden we could hear a gathering of people in our kitchen and there was like, my mom at that point probably believed something because in the morning she had to collect all the plates, all the glasses, all the, the mugs that they were on the floor shattered. Because believe me when I tell you that that night there was like a, 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 a party going on in our kitchen and there were like so many voices there was so many, but no one dared to go and check what is going on because apparently there was no one in the house. And I remember that, um, couple, I think it was an hour or two. This was going on for an hour or two. It was a very long time. And for me to prove that that's true, I even called friends of mine. I called um, my best friend, uh, Christina, and uh, my other friend, um, Reni, they were together and I called them and I put my phone on a speaker and I was like, can you hear something? And they, they said that they could hear a lot of people chatting and talking. I was like, so I'm not crazy, but there was no one. So uh, after an hour, probably a, a, around an hour, all those people, I just you could just hear them how they're leaving the place. They're just leaving the flat, yeah? And then when went quiet, we went to check uh, and the door, the front door was open. It was widely open like someone just left the place. Now my mom would say that there was earthquake that night and that's why you know all the plates were shattered and everything was there was how there was no earthquakes earthquake in our room where we were staying we were all in the living room but there was earthquake in the kitchen. I have I, I just I don't know what probably she created this narrative in her mind just to help her cope with the situation easier. So this was the very last time actually something happened in that place because not long after probably was three or four months down the line we would sell the place. But this was the very last thing that actually happened in this place, in this house while we were living there. I know uh, it is probably irresponsible or it is horrible that we had to sell the place to some other victims because I'll, I'll call it victims because the things that went down in that house were horrific. Uh, softly said they were horrific. Now, this is the story actually uh, and, and this is the end of the story. I don't know, please guys, please share with me in the comments have you ever had anything similar? I know, I, I know I'm not crazy. 
I know that there's something going on and actually this is a story I haven't shared with too many people just because I'm scared they're gonna accuse me that I'm completely crazy but I, I, I know for fun what happened there this I experienced that but please 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 go down in the comments and let me know if you ever had anything similar or if you know for someone who had any similar experience and I would appreciate if you give me a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel I would remind you again you wouldn't want to miss what's coming next I will see you next time and this probably is gonna be next Monday I will try to be consistent and upload every Monday I love you lots bye